you know, when you have that realization that all you really needed for movies this year was seeing Channing Tatum's bare ass covered in leeches, you know you succeeded. Hey, what's up guys? It's me, Anthony, here to give you guys another movie review. This time it is for the new film, The Lost City. Reclusive author Loretta Sage writes about exotic places in her popular adventure novel that features a handsome cover model named Alan. While on tour promoting her new book with Alan, Loretta gets kidnapped by an eccentric billionaire who hopes she can lead him to an ancient city's lost treasure. Determined to prove he can be a hero in real life and not just in the pages of her books, Alan sets off to rescue her. Who knew that I would need this movie because it just feels like this year has just been kind of meh, just with personal life in the world, and I just needed a good laugh. I didn't know I'd need one. And this movie provides that and much, much more. It's just really nice and refreshing to have a good comedy nowadays. I feel like we don't get those a lot. And this is The Lost City, a movie that I admittedly in the beginning when I saw the trailers and the promotion for this, didn't think this was going to be good at all. I mean, I like Sandra Bullock. Channing Tatum, uh, you know, whatever for him. I like him in the 21 Jump Street stuff, but other than that, I don't really have that much of attachment to him. And another thing that a lot of people aren't talking about is this is potentially Sandra Bullock's last film for a good while. In an interview with E.T., she said that, I'm paraphrasing here, that this is going to be her last film and that she wants to spend more time with her family and raise her kids. You just mentioned this is the last one, people. Are you taking a step back from film? I need to be in the place that makes me happiest. Mm. And I just want to be 24-7 with my babies and my family. That's it. So is The Lost City a good footnote for Sandra Bullock to ride off into the sunset and semi-retire? Let's get into the review of The Lost City. So first off, let's talk about our two leads. We have Sandra Bullock and Channing Tatum. Two people, like I said in the beginning of the video, I think they are pretty good. Sandra Bullock, I hold a little bit higher regard than Channing Tatum, but I mean, Channing Tatum in this film and others, like I said, 21 Jump Street series, he's really good in that film. I think he found his footing of being like a comedic actor. He does an excellent job in this film, playing off of all the characters, Daniel Radcliffe, Sandra Bullock, and the rest of the cast. He's just really impressive at least for me in this film, this all the the jokes and the delivery and all that stuff. And Sandra Bullock is no slouch either. I mean, she's done this before. I feel like she's kind of typecast in this role, at least. I feel like she's done so many films where, you know, she's with somebody, a leading man. I don't know if I would go so far as Channing Tatum being a leading man, but, uh, you know, she's been in movies with a lot of co-star, high-level co-stars, and I feel like she does a good job in all of them. She always brings the chemistry with her co-star, and I feel like this one's no different. The chemistry that they have is so infectious, you it's so believable, and it just makes the movie more enjoyable in that way because you're rooting for these two characters. These two characters are likable. They have flaws, but each of them like kind of complements each other. It's really outstanding how good the chemistry is between the two. And this is a comedy, so you know, this movie is not gonna be for everyone. And I think it's really hard in today's like Hollywood cinema world to make a good comedy, a comedy that's universally liked. But looking at the Rotten Tomatoes scores, I know Rotten Tomatoes aren't everything and scores aren't everything, but it looks like unanimously the critics and the audience seem to enjoy this movie a heck of a lot. And I can see why. I mean, this is my kind of comedy. You know, I like the slapstick stuff. I like the like awkward cringe humor, as you could say. But it's there's there's an art form in the cringe humor, okay? You, you gotta be an expert in how to finesse the cringe humor to make it not as cringe and actually funny. Does that make sense? But it just reminds me of like the old days when I was growing up and there were so many good comedies out in, in the world, in the space, like the Easy A's, the Super Bads, all that kind of stuff mixed together. And you know, there was crap too, you know, Scary Movie had like five movies during that time. And it's kind of weird because I didn't know I wanted a comedy so bad nowadays. And one thing that I really like about this film is the side characters don't get really overshadowed by the main characters. Yes, we have Sandra Bullock, we have Channing Tatum, but we also have these side characters like Sandra Bullock's character's uh, editor, you know, book editor is helping her around. She does a really good job in this film. We also have like, you know, the 
grandmother of the editor in there. Just a very small role, but it really stands out because of the character development that they have in here. And it's not a lot. You know, we don't get like 10 minutes dedicated to this character. It's like a couple of seconds, a couple of minutes, but they do it so well that it makes those characters stand out. And for me, what makes this movie come together is the pacing. This movie just gets to the point and I love that, especially in comedies here, action comedies, romantic comedies, whatever you want to call this, just movies in general. I like when movies get to the point and they can get to the point without having that many missteps. Usually in these kind of films, you have that one scene or a couple scenes where they, they stop the pace. The pace comes to a screeching halt and then they have to have a dramatic scene. That does happen in this film, but they don't stick to that slow you know dramatic scene too much or too long and when they do do that they really quickly transition to like the comedic you know aspect of the film or just a comedic line and it doesn't feel like it's just thrown in there it just feels like it's part of the story and it's flowing with it but we got to talk about the shining the shiny moment in this film brad pitt in his hair what the hell man i mean this is this is the best Brad Pitt that we've seen I mean they they went all out with his character was this John Trainer or something Jack Trainer? <laughs> that was amazing I I need him to have his own movie the way that they utilized him in this film is so great and the surprise that happens with his character comes out of nowhere just for me I was I kind of like got shocked in the movie and I was like whoa what the heck and that usually doesn't happen too much but like all films you know everything isn't perfect and there was just a few things nitpicks here or there that I uh you know didn't really enjoy that kind of kind of just made me like oh yeah I'm watching I'm watching a movie one of the things that kind of bugged me was just the green screen in some of the scenes they'll have scenes where they're talking on top of a cliff you know in supposedly in the rainforest and then you look out into the distance and uh you can tell it's green screen and it kind of feels like it's like a painted backdrop uh maybe not even a green screen at all it just looks like a painted backdrop like they did in the old days you know Kind of like what they did in La La Land, but not as like on purpose, or maybe that was on purpose. Just for me, it felt like it was just out of place in this film because La La Land, you can understand, they're trying to go back to like the early days of the Hollywood era. But in this one, it's like modern day and backdrops, it just didn't work for me. But the main thing that I had an issue with is I may have blinked or I was laughing too hard when they announced this or talked about this, but I don't think they really explained very well how Sandra Bullock's character gets kidnapped or why she gets kidnapped. I mean, they explain why she gets kidnapped, but the connecting of the dots of how she gets to point A to point B, I don't really think they fleshed out really well. You have Daniel Radcliffe's character who wants to know the information in the location of the Lost City so he can get himself a, uh, you know, hefty prize treasure and he wants Sandra Bullock to take him there and uh the the dots connecting of how he figured out that Sandra Bullock knew about the lost city is not really explained it like I said I may have missed it but the whole time throughout the movie I was just like how this could have been avoided <laughs> overall guys the lost city is a blast I had a ton of fun with this film I didn't think that we needed a comedy like this in this time but you know what now that i think about it we really needed it it came out at the right time and if this is going to be sandra bullock's last film for a, quite a while then i think this is the film to ride off into the sunset with but guys let me know what you think in the comments down below did you like it did you hate it how long do you think that sandra bullock is going to be semi-retired from movies let me know in the comments down below also guys don't forget to check out my twitter so you can stay up to date with my channel don't forget to like and subscribe and remember guys keep watching movies